Hey, this is Miko Hughes from Pet Cemetery. You guys are listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my pot on mind cry, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Horsey Sauce Harley. How the hell are you? Ooh, I do like me some horsey sauce. I'm doing good. I figured I you do, did. yeah. <laughs> I like one horsey sauce and one RB sauce. That's what I thought. On, yep, just one and one on my giant roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> you struck me as a mixer kind of guy. I kind of yeah, you know, out. one in one. Yeah. 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 Maybe not the whole packet of horses. <laughs> right. right. So uh, over here, Ben Harley, still uh, I'm kind of getting over that sickness I had last week. Yeah, how you feeling? Um, I'm not feeling too bad. It's just kind of like snot now. You know, it just yeah. runs from your yeah. nose down your chest. You cough it up and it's a never-ending vicious cycle. Right, you know, right. uh, uh, basically, but Mr. Ben Harley, but mm, yes, mm. oh, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, a few years back, about five years ago, believe this. If you can believe it was five years ago on the show, I Ooh, I hey. weaved a tale. I weaved okay. a tale about uh, a colonoscopy. If you remember oh, yeah. correctly, <laughs> yes. talking has it about been five how, years. Tomorrow? It has been five years. Yeah, basically, they put a mag light with a camera on the end of it. And uh, told yeah, told a little yeah. story about that. So I don't know how long ago this was. Probably like three or four months ago at this point. I have a let's just put this way. I don't want to gross anybody out. I'm going to do my best <laughs> not to gross anybody out, but to warn everyone, Ben Harley. This is a warning. I'm putting okay. a warning out, and I'm stirring the pot. I'm going out warning, there. Warning, warning, warning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I had a sign. Um, after drinking a lot of liquids, I had a sign <laughs> that I should see a urologist. Is that is that yeah. clear enough? Yeah, oh yeah. It wasn't sure. clear. <laughs> How about that? So so some some strange spooky sign, like uh oh, uh -oh. like yeah. let me see. So uh -huh. <laughs> now lots of things can cause that. It's not a reason to panic or nothing, but it's a reason to go get checked out. So I thought, sure. aha, my body's telling me to go check, get checked out. So I'm going to go find out what's going on. And I don't know what the hell just happened right there, but we need to get that checked out. All right. So <laughs> yeah. I go to my primary physician, my doctor. Okay. Yeah. Who basically says, okay, uh, relieve yourself into this cup, which is always fun. <laughs> you know, my aim yeah. isn't what it used to be, Mr. Ben Harley. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah. So I go and I and I I do that for these people, and then you know, of course, you had to be humiliated with by a, you know a thirty something year old young girl. She was a I don't know what do you call them nurse practitioner or something. You know, we have a country yeah. doctor office, so th these aren't sure. exactly you it's know Mayberry times. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I get to humiliate myself in front of that lovely young girl, and you know, she's like, "Well, let's let's take a look." Oh God! Here we go. Oh God! Here. Yeah. So, so we start there. No answers. Doesn't know what's going on. So they they test my liquid. Nothing. Now this okay. was about four days after I was having problems, seeing things. So I'm like, huh? So I said, well, we need to get you over to a CAT scan. I'm like, all right, okay, all right. So I did that. I did that. That was about a month and a half ago. Yeah. Or so. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't that bad. They give you an IV. Here's the thing with me and needles. I don't like <laughs> them. Nobody likes them. But if you're no. putting, <laughs> I'm your typical old drug addict. If you're putting <laughs> something in me, I'm fine. If you try to take blood from me, there's going to be violence. I can't <laughs> do it. I'm one of those people. And I did not know that until I was about five or six years ago. I had to give blood for something. It wasn't like giving sure. blood. I had to have blood drawn for something. Okay. And I thought I was going to die. I mean, it, yeah. it was just like this little prick and started like pulling stuff out of me. And I started watching. I'm like, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to get up out of this spot and I'm walking out of here. This is not for me. You know, yeah. and it, it almost made me gag. It was awful. So, yeah, I realized yeah. that. so anyway, so they put stuff in you. I guess I don't know, like a dye or something so that the cat scan can read. 
what yeah. you're doing. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with all this. This is like, oh, this is all right. You know, I'm in this machine and there's like a little speaker in the machine telling me, breathe in, exhale. Breathe, out. <laughs> breathe in, exhale. I'm like, I don't know who you are, disembodied voice. I never met the man. I have no idea. But anyway, so I did that. Now the CAT scan. Okay, so now... What happens when you are having these symptoms and you go get a CAT scan? What do you want? Results, right? Yes. You want yeah. some results because you're a little nervous, right? <laughs> so I get a call from a doctor's office and says, uh, I, uh, I'm i scheduling you with a urologist. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, for- <laughs> and, they're like, and, and they're like, okay, so, uh, so how does blah, 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 you know, uh, date sound? Um, I guess, what is this about? And then, yeah. the, and then it was quiet in the other end. Oh my and she's God. like, um, your symptoms. I'll just put it that way. I went, uh, well, I went for a cat scan. Is this about the cat scan? And the woman was, Oh, Oh, you went for, Oh, Oh yeah. You know, I think I saw that today, but I don't know how to read those things. So I'm going to have to have miss so-and-so call you miss <laughs> like miss Julie call you. I'm like, um, what? What in the hell is going on? You know, I'm like, okay, yeah. so what happened was that genius at the doctor's office wasn't supposed to call me yet. The doctor, mm. or they were supposed to call and tell me my CAT scan looked fine. But I still had to go to urologist. Right. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm just going to go down this road. They, I started it. Let's see what's going on, right? Okay. Sure. A, a diligent adult, right? That's what we had to be sometimes when we know we're falling apart. I now know. or very soon, yeah. right? Mm. <laughs> So I go to a urologist and in, in walks this tall, gangly, probably 34, maybe year old gangly, tall dude with a long beard. He looked like he might be a vendor at a convention (laughs) pretty much. No, that didn't really bother me. He came in like holding his coffee with both his hands. He's like, he's real laid back. He's like, Hey, what's up? He's like, what's up, man? Got got some problems there, you know? I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, he's like, he goes, yeah. And he's like, have you had any problems? You know, no. So he gets all up in me, you know, he's grabbing, squeezing, poking, prodding, uh, sniffing, you know, he's like cough, all this. I'm like, all right, pal, whatever. We're closer than I ever wanted to be at this point. So that's fine. You know, See, he's no problems at all. I'm like, okay, so the, so the urologist tells you what you don't want to hear when you go to the urologist, right? Right. I got to rotor rooter you. Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, we got to we have to have a, well, I don't know what they try to call it, you know, and it's not an endoscopy, my big colonoscopy. Whatever yeah. it is, it's a scope of some sort, <laughs> right? And right. I'm like, oh, man, come on. And I listen, here's the thing. I don't have any problems I had one problem for like two days. Okay. Yeah. Like symptom. And that's it. This was months ago. At this point, I'm like, I'm fine. The cat scan yeah. was fine. You just want to root around. That's all you want to do. You know, so I don't, you know, we got to make sure. Got to make sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Look, I'm not the only person who has to have this done. Right. Can't right. be that big of a deal. Right. All right. So, all right. Fine. Well, let's do it. Oh, no, no, no. We don't do it now. Oh, we don't do it now. <laughs> no, that's a whole different deal. <laughs> Quoting him in there. That's a whole different deal. Yeah. You got quoting right there, okay? Millennials. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. And he's like, uh, yeah, you know, um, some people talk about anesthesia, stuff like that. Ah, you don't need that stuff. It's not that big deal, you know? Sometimes I hear people report back, thinking you know, like a little bit of burnings and say, I'm like, let's not talk about this right now. Then he says, no, I've never had it done myself. <laughs> oh, okay, well, really? <laughs> Really? That's like somebody <laughs> cooking me a steak that's never eaten steak before, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh so I God. go back and now, now, now I got to wait for, for like two or three weeks for this. So now you, and you, now you have to have this on your mind for like two or three weeks, yeah. right? You're like, oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So now I got a friend. I'm, I'm leaving names out of this, by the way. I'm not, and all names out of this because it's kind of personal stuff, you know? Okay. I got a friend who's got some kidney stone issues. All right. So he's had this done a few times, a couple of times. So. I say, you know, hey, did they, did they put you under for this or anything? He's like, uh, once they did, once they didn't. But when they didn't, he said they shot some cold stuff up that kind of numbs you. I'm like, oh, yikes. Yeah. Oh, you know, he's like, yeah, it's weird. He's like, but you feel like you have to pee. It's like pressure. I'm like, oh. He's like, that's something don't, don't worry about. Okay. All right. Fine. So, <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, look, honestly, I kind of just didn't think about it. 
You can't. You can't sit there yeah. and think about. It. I just didn't really think about. It. I was like, you know what? This this is done thousands of times every day. Everybody gets there. I ain't gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, it's just it's really ain't that big of a deal. So, all right, fine. So Angio takes me. I, I didn't want to drive myself, you know. So Angio, she, sure. she takes me. Being the good wife she is, you know, and and everything. And I'm, you know, I I go back there. And, uh, the, of course, there has to be a woman who's helping, too. Now, this woman, <laughs> this woman looked like she had seen every <laughs> every manhood in the county, which she probably has. <laughs> Wasn't really worried about that. I mean, at this point, who cares? You know, it's like, whatever. Right, yeah. It's not impressive, nor is it frightening. It's nothing. It's just there. It's, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, they used to call you a Joe Normal. <laughs> yeah. Joe Normal. Yeah. It is. So okay. She's looking at Joe Normal pretty much. Let's put it that way. <laughs> at best. All right. So. Uh, that's funny. Out, out pulls this stuff. I'm thinking, well, there's that numbing stuff, that cold stuff. Yeah. And I start feeling her touch me and i said that's kind of personal but go ahead yeah. you are a woman and why not you know <laughs> and she says oh this is antiseptic uh, okay all right I, I, i'd yeah. like to have one of those before you do anything that's fine and then the dude comes in and he grabs what looks like look you want to talk about gun control i got a gun we need to control because this thing looked like a little mini ar-15 all right pulls oh, it out <laughs> First thing I did was yell for all the school children to run. <laughs> Too run. soon? Too soon? Yeah. No. All right. So next thing I know, the lady comes in and goes, and I'm I'm pretty relaxed. You know, I'm sitting there just kind of pants down. I'm like, oh, come yeah. on, let's get this going here. I'm, I got a weekend. You know, I got a weekend to get this. <laughs> Friday at 3.30. What a way to start a weekend. Friday at 3.30. So I'm sitting back. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she comes in, and there's a couple of things that were said to me that I should have taken as a more of a roadmap what was about ready to happen. Because the first thing she <laughs> says is, um, have you ever had this done before? I said, no. She said, I thought so. And she walked out. You thought oh, so? Yeah. What do you mean you thought so? You know, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. She comes back in, she's like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. He's He's fast. He's gentle. I'm like, no, it's just fast. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not worried, um, but you're starting to worry me here. Yeah. So the guy, you know, he comes in, he goes, all right. Uh, you know, this guy, he still, I think he had the same cup of coffee. I think it's his prop. <laughs> you know, basically he walks from the, <laughs> all right, hey, how you doing? You know, he shakes my hand. He's like, you know, this is, all right, well, we're going to look, we're going to take a look. Your CT scan looks fine, but just want to make sure we don't leave a stone unturned. Ha, 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 kidney stone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to go in there and do this. I'm like, okay. Now, I, I, I'm thinking that this is, here comes the cold stuff. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't get no cold stuff. No? <laughs> no. All I can <laughs> tell you is this. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> what they basically do is they basically take a I don't know looks like an optical cable I guess you know yeah. and they and they shoot some kind of liquid into you to spread you apart to allow for this <laughs> thing to go in Ben Harley these butchers need to be stopped <laughs> this is bullshit I mean this was bullshit I swear to you I was in there going oh fuck I'm, I'm yelling fuck all right yeah. And I said, oh, sorry. God. And the lady's like, it's not the first time we've heard that. I'm like, ha, shit, you motherfucker, yeah. you know. <laughs> so the guy's like, so so now I'm, I'm, he goes, no, wiggle your toes. Relax. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle my toes? Can you imagine me? I mean, like, I didn't have a, there was no net. I, I was, <laughs> it was demo without any kind of filter <laughs> whatsoever, you know, at this oh, point. And, and, he, and he, so he tells me, he goes, and, and I, I think they were surprised a little bit by the discomfort. It seemed like they were a little surprised by the discomfort I was in. And I'm like, fuck, geez, geez. and they go, um, can you explain to me what you're feeling right now? I go, what? That's exactly what I did. He goes, could you explain to me what you're, what you're feeling right now? I go, what I'm feeling? He goes, yeah, I go, violated. I go, I'm pretty much feeling what you're doing, I think. That's exactly what I said to him. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> He's out of me. And I sat up and I looked at him and he was kind of grinning at me. He shook my hand and he kind of fled the room because I was looking oh at him. I must have just looked at him like, you're gone. You're going yeah. down. Then he tells <laughs> me I'm me. fine. Uh, I don't need to come back for any reason. 
He goes, if you need me, you know where I am. I'm looking at this guy like, I am never going to look at you again, motherfucker, ever <laughs> in my entire life. So moral of the story is, folks, if you have this done, make sure you have some kind of either get knocked out or make sure the cold shit, whatever it is, <laughs> oh whatever it is. I talked to another person who had the cold stuff, too. And they said, yeah, it was this kind of pressure. I said, that's what I heard. <laughs> I've heard about pressure, but I felt a burden <laughs> And a <laughs> invasion, oh, oh my an God. invasion. <laughs> he got an alien probe. Holy <laughs> shit! These butchers need to be stopped. What the fuck? Oh my and God! And then, like thinking back on it, I think this guy was inexperienced, and he was literally asking me what it felt like. So he was maybe deciding in his career whether or not to numb a dude. Hey, wow. jackass, numb a dude. <laughs> Why wouldn't you numb? I mean, here's the thing. I told Angie, I came out and I looked at Angie. I was, that was fucking horrible. I was depressed for half of the, and this is like serious. I was depressed for half the weekend over it. It was that bad. Oh. It was like traumatic. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry if you, if, if folks out there, are gonna have, do I don't that, know, yeah. if folks out there are going to have this done soon or something like that, all I'm saying, I'm not saying don't do it. You got to, I mean, you know, there's, you think there, I mean, I, I guess she got the car, looked over to Angel, go, it is 2018. You're telling me there isn't an easier way to check this shit than this. Yeah. Come on. Are you kidding me? My <laughs> God. My phone probably has an app that can answer this better. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just paid a dude to fucking God. <laughs> Manhandle me. To, to violate oh. me, you know? So, mm. yeah, well. yeah. So here's the thing. My, the thing is, it's like, just get, get numbed somehow. Just trust me on this one. Just trust me. That's uh, insist on some kind oh, of anesthesia. Just insist on it. Do not go in. I don't, uh, I don't know. Just don't. <laughs> First of all, they put you on this little table. You know how you go to the doctor's office and you get on this a little table and then they extend the legs out for you? Yeah. Yeah. But you don't have any, uh, I mean, your legs yeah. are hanging off a table. Now, as a man, think about that. Then they're going to do this to you. My knees immediately went up. I'm surprised I didn't knock the motherfucker's glasses across the room. <laughs> God. It took me a few days to get over it. It was it was not uh, it, this was not an experience. Poor Tim, oh man, what a weekend, huh? Yeah, well, I'm just <laughs> I just needed to warn the audience. These butchers need yeah. to be stopped. <laughs> Damn motherfuckers! <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it was terrible. It was absolutely awful. And I ain't lying. Traumatic. I can't lie to our audience, Ben Harley. And I don't want to scare anybody going in. All I'm saying is insist on some kind of anesthesia. That's all I'm saying. Just <laughs> yeah. insist on it because. Don't go, don't go the tough guy route. You'll learn how tough you are not quickly, very <laughs> quickly. So, uh, I mean, I even told Angie, you know, and I, I even told my dad, I was like, um, I'm not having that done again. I will die. I'll die before I have that done again. That's what I said. And I meant it. And I damn mean it. I'm like, nope. You want to do that to me again? Pfft, just make my funeral arrangements. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I would rather die than go through it again. And that's uh, a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. So, that's how my weekend started, Ben Harley. Now let's get, let's get to what I watched besides this guy's top of this guy's head. All right. I never wanted to look down. Like, oh I never wanted to look down my chest area and see the top of a guy's head. All right. No offense to anybody who digs that. I oh, did not. Poor Timo. Oh, oh my God. I feel for you, brother. Mm. Jeez, at least. Oh my God. Anyway, so let me get to some stuff I watched. I'll try to get through them quick. I had to tell that story though. That was a little long, but. That's a perfect, it's a public service announcement as far as I'm concerned. Right, yeah. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Watch a movie called Monsters Wanted. This is a documentary about a big haunted house in Louisville in mm, okay. 2011. Uh, this was kind of fun. Uh, there were familiar faces, mostly because they go to a, um, a haunt convention, which takes okay. place every year in St. Louis, Missouri. Actually, here. What was funny is um, that just took place this weekend. So I oh, actually watched okay. a movie from 2011, and they had scenes from the uh, Trans World Dome here in St. Louis. Yeah, and it was actually this weekend. So that was that was a little nice. quinky dink, I guess. But uh, not too bad, not too bad. Just a bunch of horror people that I mean, exact kind of people we hang out at conventions, trying yeah. to get a big pollutant haunted house going. So you know that they're <laughs> it's going to be interesting because. No, none of us are very stable. I did just tell you my story about my problems, right? All right. So, 
You're definitely unstable right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, right. <laughs> From 1971, Mr. Ben Harley watched this on the, the Blu-rays. Uh, the Blu-rays? Uh, yeah, watched the, Misfi- uh, the Mephisto Waltz. Okay. With uh, Alan Alda, Jacqueline Bissett, and Bradford Dillman, and uh, Kurt Jurgens. And okay. this is one of the cycle of the 70s adult horror films with Satan involved. Oh, like yeah. a Rosemary's oh, yeah. Baby type yeah. of feel movie. It's all right. I, you know, as I get older, these movies sometimes get a little bit better, except for Rosemary's Baby. It gets worse. Like that, huh? I just don't like the movie. No, <laughs> me, and, uh, me and Angio and Danny Hicks watched it because he's a big fan of Rosemary's Baby. I just think it's boring. I just don't like it. Yeah, that was my problem with it when I was younger. It just, I mean, it was okay. I, I watched it one time, but I was just like, eh, you know, okay. All right. Right. You know, but at that time, I really wasn't into much of, you know, I was wanting more, more, more. You know what I mean? Like, right. So. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I but Mephisto Waltz was kind of like it was all right. I mean, I didn't have a huge plot. It was just interesting to see Alan Alden in, in a starring film in a, a theatrical movie. You know, I'm used to yeah, match yeah. and stuff. I, admittedly, you know, I know he's in a lot of other stuff, but uh, yeah, eh, it was I all like right. It. it was an okay time waster. It was just sure. one of those throw a dart at the wall. Let's just throw this in. Um, watch the movie on Amazon Prime. Another one, a documentary called Legendary AD. Okay. This is a documentary about first assistant directors. Ooh, okay. right. I love right. movies, Ben yes, Harley. He has to say, this is a movie about grips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually really good. Um, yeah. The first assistant director is basically like the foreman. So he's basically he's doing a lot more. Yeah. He's keeping everything together. And he directs the second unit stuff. So... If okay. you have like an like a fight going on, and then you have like a bunch of background like fighting, well, he's he's directing on the background fighting. Okay, so All it's right. it's one of those things. Uh, if you have a busy city street, he's directing everyone but the main actors, and the second okay. unit sometimes does direct the main actors and inserts or things like that. You know, so you know, very interesting. They they had a, a, a story Ben earlier. I know I'm running a little long here, but I, I want to tell you. Oh, you're story. fine, my friend. I want to tell yeah. you a story. It's pretty interesting. Um, they asked uh, at the end of the documentary. First of all, excellent documentary. You learn what a first assistant director, basically the assistant director, the AD. You learn yeah. what they do. You learn what they are. You learn who they are. They they and they none of them. I shouldn't say none of them. Most of them don't seem to want the director's job. They love what they do. Actually, I think they don't want all the pressure, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, um, but so they, they asked us a question at the end of this movie, at the end of this documentary. OK, they okay. one question to all of them. If you had an unlimited budget and anything you could do, what movie would you direct? Would you direct as a first assistant director? What unlimited yeah. budget? And one guy said, you know, I worked on a movie with an unlimited budget and he wouldn't say what it was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, but sometimes a budget's a good thing. It causes yeah. you to have to be creative. So yep. he tells a story about this movie. Um, I can't remember what I can't remember what movie it was. Okay, but they needed a scene to make this scene make sense. This was back in like I think the forties. Okay, yeah, like a film noir movie or something like that. They needed this shot to make this these two characters' relationship make sense. Meeting a man and a woman. Okay. So the director says, I need, I need New York city. I got to have at least a block of New York city. And they said, we don't have the budget. And he's like, well, I, I don't care if you had the budget. I got to have me, my New York city. You got to build me a, you had to build me. It says, I got to have this shot. It, the movie doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So they say, okay. He goes, well, look, how much can you build me with the budget? They said four feet, <laughs> four feet high. <laughs> All right. It's four feet high. <laughs> so the yeah. director says, fine, do it. So what they did is they built four foot high, all right, city street, not just up to four feet. So the sidewalk and the, the bottoms of the buildings, they couldn't afford yeah. it anymore. So what the director did is he shot down at their feet and okay. you saw a woman's legs, very pretty legs walking. Then a man starts walking next to her. You clearly know some man's walking next to her. Then you see the yeah. footsteps walk together for a little while. She drops a hanky. A hand goes down to pick up the hanky. And the shot rises up with the guy who picks up the hanky. And then you have a door behind him. That's okay. how they got around it. 
<laughs> well, the AD, the, for the AD was telling the story, says that is one of the, uh, that is known as a brilliant shot in Hollywood, which would not have been done had he had the right. budget to do it. And that was a great right. little story. I thought it was a nice little, that's awesome. Yeah. Nice little lesson. I just thought it was kind of neat. And they actually show this, the, the scene, uh, in, in the documentary. So you actually see it and you get it. You're like, Oh, that's really cool. That's neat. So anyway, yeah. Legendary AD on Amazon prime. I, I, if you like movies, I, this is a fun one. Cause it's something you don't know about. You right, know, and it's, right. it's very interesting. So, okay, moving on. Yeah, that sounds fun. Actually. It is. It is actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, moving on. This is, a, I don't know why, you know, Ben Harley, I like to beat myself over the eyeballs with bad movies <laughs> and I go back and watch them <laughs> sometimes in like a, a insane amount of times just to make sure they're no good. So <clears throat> in, in the spirit of that, I yeah. went back and watched, and I don't even remember the year for this, but I went back and watched the movie Sphere. Okay. With Dustin Hoffman, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Sharon Stone, Peter mm. Coyote, Liev Schreiber, underwater movie. They find okay. uh, what they think is a spaceship underwater and it's got a sphere in it. And the sphere's alive. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> great yeah. idea. And what a <laughs> shitty movie. Oh, really? what a horrid movie. <laughs> yeah. They set you up for, for a whole bunch of cool crap to happen and none of it does. None, none of, of it, it does. It's yeah. bad. It's really bad. Stinky. Pooper doos. Um, <laughs> this movie needs to have a procedure done that I explained earlier. Ooh. Anyway, y'all, I'm going there. Ooh. I don't care. Yeah. All Thanks. right, moving on. Uh, a brand new movie, Mr. Ben Harley. Pretty much brand, brand new. Last couple movies. I watched this on the Blu-rays. G- yeah. Geostorm. Oh. Yeah, man. with Gerard okay. Butler and Ed Harris. Uh, yeah. Andy Garcia and a bunch of young people. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, super silly, typical environmental hysteria film. You know, it's like the day after tomorrow or something. Where yeah, yeah. You know, they like, they got to keep making these because we keep going past the years. Is this supposed to happen? <laughs> they only gave this one like two years, so they know they knew it was going to have a shelf life. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's cliche ridden. It's watchable. I mean, if you can, if you get seriously offended by people who are hysterical about things like that, then don't watch it. Fine. Right. Right. You know, yeah. but if, if you can deal with the fact that people are always going to be hysterical about things and even the native Americans had a rain dance, uh, you know, <laughs> it's all right. Just it's, it's, it is kind of silly, but it's see, I've seen war, a, a, a sphere was much worse <laughs> and had a much better cast. And it was, was a say, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, Awful. Let's see here. A couple movies real quick. Man, huh? I'm trying to get through yeah. a couple movies. Uh, NGO, Chance, and I actually watched Close Encounters. Ah, yes. On Saturday yeah, night. Out, speaking about this. Yeah, out in the uh, uh, the sunroom. Uh, so that was fun. We watched the theatrical version. We, okay. didn't, we didn't watch right. any of the special falutin editions and stuff. I kind of realized after watching that legendary AD and Ben Harley, you know, I've said this before, so I'm not just making this shit up. I've said this before because <laughs> yeah. we've, we've, we've reviewed uh, different cuts of films and yes. I, what do I always, I, most of the time I think the theatrical cuts the best. Yeah, there I were more too. eyeballs on it. There was more opinions on it and they took out pet, project shit that the director wanted in there and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. also the, like the one thing you had to give the execs is okay. They might suck. They might be boring, but they're going into a movie, not knowing what the hell's going on. Right. And, right. and the director gets too close to a film sometimes. And so he thinks everybody knows what the fuck's going on and they don't. So if you get these boring executives coming in and, and at least being able to follow a film, I think right. that's probably the way to go. So, I, most of the time, I do think the, the theatrical is usually the, the superior cut of anything. Um, so that's what we watched. And I was glad because I was not, I didn't want to see 10, 15 minutes of Richard Dreyfus going into a bunch of neon signs. Because that's, yeah. what, that's what, it, what, what I remember is that he goes into the yeah. spaceship. I'm like, ooh, and I, and I know as a kid, were you the same way? Like, oh, they didn't show the inside of the spaceship. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you got it a few years later and you're like, oh, God, <laughs> this is it. I don't want to go there. Oh, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> How can I get any sleep with all these neon lights? It's right, yeah, it's right exactly. That's <laughs> all it was. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. it, it looked no, like you're right, no. inside yeah. there. Yeah, it was <laughs> stupid. Anyway, um, that's a great movie though. I love that film. I just, it is good. You know what though? I have to admit, it's not holding up as great as like maybe Jaws or something. It's good. Sure, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Excellent movie, but it's it did slip a little bit. It has slipped just a little, just a little bit. I'm glad, and I'm glad I watched the theatrical version. If I would have seen the other ones, I'd be pissed. 
probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, not too bad though. I do like that. When I was a kid, I loved that movie. I mean, that's one of my kid yeah. and childhood movies. I'm sure it's yours too. Yeah, I, I just like. I mean, it. As I got older, I understood a little bit more about it. You know, it wasn't right. all about just the aliens and everything. It was all about you know the family crumbling to all that stuff. It's just you know. And I think Spielberg had a lot of problem with that in his own personal life. So you see that in his movies, you know, some yeah. of that stuff like Richard that. Richard Dreyfuss so. just takes off. I mean, yeah, first of all, part- he doesn't care about his wife anymore and starts making out with yeah. another less attractive woman. And then he. Yeah, that's all. That's, yeah. You know, who? that's Ralphie's mom. From, yeah. Uh, yeah. And she's also in Slapshot, too. She okay. <laughs> I don't dislike that's her. That's Hammerhand's wife. I don't dislike her, but I'd be like, I, you can't, you can't oh, no, dump yeah. Terry Garr. For yeah, anything, the, really, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, stop. Well, it. That's a hard thing too. I think watching that movie too as a kid, watching your father kind of disintegrate. And I think I watched that Spielberg uh, documentary, and he was alluding to there was a part uh, in hit, in the movie, you know, where Richard Dreyfus is in the shower, just melting down, and his son smashing the door and stuff, and uh-huh. call him a crybaby or whatever. That actually happened in Spielberg's life with his dad. The first time he saw his dad cry, I guess he flipped out. Uh-huh. Did like was saying that call, you know. So, yeah, there's some hard moments in that movie too. Yeah. But you know, besides the aliens, and <laughs> I mean, the aliens are nice. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> so. they're, 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 they come to save the day. Yeah, <laughs> Let's yeah. take this dude off this planet. He's poisoning it. For God's <laughs> sake. Yeah, but, but yeah, uh, good movie too. Yeah, it is. It is a good movie. I just, it, it, yeah. but it, it's it's only slipped just a slight touch. Sure. Uh, but I mean, in fairness, that's probably a hell of an achievement. Um, it was funny too because yeah. Chance was watching it and he didn't even realize it was that old. I said, really? "Oh, Chance!" I go, "I was, you know, a, a pup when this thing came out." And he was like, "Oh, it yeah. doesn't look that old, you know." And I said, "Well, it's looks good. Man. It's made really well." Yeah, it's a, there is a yeah. documentary on uh, Amazon. At least there was on Amazon Prime about the town that was made in Arizona, I think. Oh, okay. And like the lady across the way from Richard Dreyfus who keeps looking out her window, that woman actually lived in that house. So they oh, really? hired her to be the actress because her window actually, <laughs> so that was real. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right, moving on, that's Mr. Ben Harley. I got two more yeah. here real quick. Uh, okay, Andrew buddy. and I watched a little, actually it's a mini series that you might okay. have heard of called Salem's Lot. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, how was that? Uh, not too bad. Hells, that, that thing holds up great. I, yeah. and, and Angio even brought up the, the how similar it is to Needful Things. Oh, yeah. Very similar to Big Needful time. Things. And it's got to be one of the top, I don't know, three vampire films ever made. It's a good movie. I, I, yeah. I love the actual vampire in it. The yeah. Master. It's All great. of them. All of the vampires are creepy in yeah. that movie. And yeah. vampires don't really bother me that much. And it's like that one with the glowing eyes and the yeah. them kids floating in the wind. I told <laughs> Angio, them kids floating in them damn windows. I said, when this thing aired, there wasn't one damn kid that slept good these nights. No, Not no, that one. was scary. Yeah. And then the, the fact that it was like his friend, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, you, you know, like one of my friends is a vampire. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But you know what I mean? I just say it's like uh, that movie was scary for that stuff. That yeah. part, there's I love the confrontation in the kitchen, the priest, and you know, come on, face the master. Oh, that's your faith hilarious. versus <laughs> that part is you know, it's like yeah. But the va- I, I love my one of my favorite parts in horror of all time is that where the vampire just comes crashing through the window and uh-huh. he's laying on the ground. Yeah, you really don't know what it is, right? You know what I mean, and that part always freaked me out and still does right because you don't know what it is like what is that wait Mm -hmm. wait is now it's moving now it's getting what is it and then when it finally appears how creepy he looks you know it's just great but i mean that i've always been afraid of that (laughs) that part you know it's just like what is that uh it's definitely memorable the only thing about that scene is is that james mason (laughs) comes a little batty over the top like, oh, go yeah, ahead, yeah. face the master. master. Whoa. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah. slower down there. Come on, Toby yeah. Hooper. Because Toby Hooper directed. I'm like, come on, Toby. Yeah. Calm yeah. down a little bit. It's James Mason there. <laughs> Give him some class, man. Come on. Um, yeah, it's it's this is a, it's a tremendous. Uh, I know it's a mini series, so it's like a three hour movie, basically. Yeah. But yeah. it's tremendous. Actually, the Blu ray looks outstanding. Um, looks really good because it came out like two years ago, I guess, the Blu ray did. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's it's tremendous. Uh, looks, yeah. sound, everything. So it's, it's great about it. Jeffrey Lewis too. That was the first oh, yeah. first thing I remember seeing Jeffrey Lewis in. 
actually yeah. is very memorable in that in that, that movie. and uh i remember from any which way but loose that, that also yes that's the same way with yeah. me but i think i saw this before that i'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. i did so but uh Made me a fan, though. He's a good actor. Oh, Even if he is a Scientologist, he died. But, I mean, you know, yeah. uh, he I'm sorry, he didn't die. He no, left he his earthly uh, zippered to, up yeah. thing and went across the bridge of mm -hmm. happiness. Very good. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, last up, Mr. Ben Harley went on a little freak out. A little freak out. Oh, as yeah? a mini freak out, not a big one. But okay. I'm not done with it yet, I don't think. I don't think I'm done all with right. this freak out. All right? And I, I've been holding back on this one. Okay. Old I haven't yeah. told you about this. So <laughs> I've been watching Moby Dick. <gasps> yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. The, yeah. All right. well, the, that's the Patrick Stewart version. No, right? here's what happened. All right. Now, okay. on oh, Amazon boy. Prime, we got the Patrick <laughs> yeah. Stewart version streaming. And yes. we also have the 2011, the no, the oh. 2011 William Hurt, Ethan Hawke version. Okay. Okay. So you know, have I seen that yet? I don't know. But let me tell you something. I got about. Oh, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes into um, the Patrick Stewart one. And as yeah. soon as I saw Henry Thomas going, Queek Quag, Queek Quag, I can't take this money, Queek Quag, and Queek Quag oh, going, you <laughs> Yes, you can. I'm like, I'm fucking out of this, man. Oh, it no. was awful. <laughs> I mean, and I know, I know you liked it, but me might want to go back and see it because I don't think it's held up. It's, it was like, Yeah, you know, it's okay. I mean, there's a turn. couple. I was like, oh. Well, I like, uh, Patrick Stewart's and it's good. And what's the name of the? Oh my God! From Silence of the Lambs plays. Uh, oh, Starbuck. Ted Levine. Yeah, he's good in it. <laughs> and I like too. There's a part they got yeah, Gregory Peck actually does the the preacher or priest oh, right. scene yep. in it too. That's uh, Donald Sutherland cool. in this one. Yeah, yeah. So this one has William Hurt, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke is Starbuck. Uh, yeah. Charlie Cox from the Netflix show Daredevil. He plays Daredevil. Okay. Uh, he plays yeah. Ishmael. Ishmael. Yeah. Call me Ishmael. <laughs> That's right. And then, and, and it was weird too, because right. you know, the part in Moby Dick where the, where the boat, there's another boat out there and the, and the captain's son is dying and he tries yeah. to get Ahab to take him. But all he does is tell Ahab where yeah. the white whale is. Right. That's yeah. Yeah. Stephen McCaddy. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I was like, "Oh, that's nice." Now this is a two thousand eleven. This yeah. was good, Ben Harley. I think if you like Moby Dick, you should watch this one. It's a two thousand eleven. Yeah. It is streaming right now. It's in three parts. They're an hour apiece. Um, it was made for television. I don't. I don't remember what you know. Network. I'm trying to think if I've seen it. I, I had to have come across it, but I can't remember. And I mean, because. I, I mean, I like the Patrick Stewart one, but I know it, what it was, you know, and especially for that time period. I mean, you're going to, you're lucky to get Moby Dick in the first place, right, you know? Right. Well, but, William Hurt um, plays Ahab in this one. And ah, okay. Yeah. Right. So Patrick Stewart, I, I couldn't, I could not watch it. The, I couldn't even get to Patrick Stewart. Like I couldn't even get to yeah. that part. Uh, but since this one was going, I just tried this one. Now I, I have the Gregory Peck one on Blu-ray. So okay. I, I might, I might be getting my, my greedy little paws into that one too here pretty soon. Cause I, it's a really neat yeah, story. Good. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I thought well, you I saw the other day, the, uh, the heart of the sea was on the other day on television, right? uh -huh. television. So, I and, that, you know, that one's yeah. okay. It, it's, it's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I'm glad I watched it just to know the story, mm -hmm. you know, that inspired Moby Dick mm -hmm. and what inspired Herman Melville. You know what I mean? So, right. Um and uh, that whale was a jerk too. <laughs> he, <laughs> was he was a Mo. Moby Dick, yeah. Dicky Mo, yeah. yeah. He was a Isn't jerk. that from Tom and Jerry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dicky Dick Mo. Mo. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even watch that anymore without seeing that fat, weird, animated dude from like the early seventies or late sixties. And those, <laughs> those were the weird acid-induced Tom and Jerry's, like Frenchy French ones or something. Yeah, they, they, I don't know. They all the noises really like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I hated them. They're awful, but yeah. I did like Dickie Mo. Yeah, that's Dickie. Just, it is bizarre. It's it is so bizarre. bizarre. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so but I thought you get a kick out of that. So I have a, oh, a Moby you, Dick, a Moby Dick freak out. I I was even thinking about listening to Moby Dick by Zeppelin. Nice and I, I just, I, you know, I don't know. I just, you gave in. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what you got? Now, what you so got? that's. Real quick, Tim. So yeah. that's on uh, Amazon Prime? Yeah, both of them. Actually, the Moby Dick, the Patrick Stewart Moby Dick. I mean, seriously, like, 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 Queequeg looked like one of the. Okay. He looked like Fat Two wrestler. from wrestling. Yeah, that's yeah. what he looked like. I, I think he was. It might have been. <laughs> uh, well, I looked him <laughs> up. Yeah, well, I actually yeah. I looked it up because I was wondering if he was like a wrestler. It didn't say. 
Uh, yeah. But I, I just, once I started getting into the William Hurt one, I knew that I was in better territory. I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, this is, sure. this is a little bit better. I like William Hurt a lot. Um, it does take a little bit. They, they, they have a little bit of backstory with William Hurt as Ahab and like yeah. Jillian Anderson as his wife or something like that. I don't know. So oh, okay. it takes a minute to get going, but once it does, man, it's, it's really good and it's shot in the open oh, yeah. sea. I mean, it's shot okay. on the open sea. So it, it was cool. You know, it was good. pretty yeah, good. Pretty good. That. Yeah. The end of it's a little, I mean, the, <laughs> it's really hard to shoot the climax of Moby Dick in a good way. <laughs> Not sure right. I've seen it done right, but it's always at least entertaining. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining. Yeah. yeah so, but uh, what do you got, Ben Early? That's good. What, what you got? Well, let's see here, Timo. You know, I haven't got to watch a whole heck of a lot uh, this week, but I did uh, get a chance the other night. I went out to see a band, uh, Doyle from the Misfits. Oh, okay. A yeah. uh, band um, played here in town, and I got a little text message from my buddy John Stainbrook said, Hey, you want on the list? I said, I sure do. So. Right on. You know, I said, what time's he go on? He said, 1030. I was there at 1020, Timo, and I was home by 20 to 12. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, good show. Um, you know, I feel bad about this because they were, they were good. They were pound for pound. They just, you know, they knocked it out of the park. My only, I guess, issue, and it's, uh, they were kind of like a punk rock Pantera. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Pantera. No, 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 me neither. Uh -uh. Now, uh, a lot of guys that were younger than me and some of my friends too really got into Pantera. Yeah, when it came I out. Don't know why, but yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I. I mean, I guess I can understand some of it, but my problem was it always seemed like the singer. We've talked about this. Seemed like he was yelling at me. Like, <laughs> are you mad at me? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, right. and and so I just I, yeah, that was hard for me. Mm -hmm. So this was good, like, but. <sighs> And this is the other thing I feel bad about because, you know, I really wanted to go hear a couple Misfits tunes, too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I really, I like the stuff Doyle did with Michael Graves' Misfit stuff, too, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't even sprinkle one Misfits tune in, which, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So, it's hard for me as well because I'm going to see a band I've never seen and I've never even really heard any tunes by Doyle, which is my fault. If I had known a little earlier, I probably would have gave a couple spins you know, mm -hmm. uh, to his stuff. You know, he's got two albums out. So anyways, yeah. to make a long story short, it's a good show. I had fun, enjoyed it. It was nice to get out, you know, and uh, see some stuff. But like... Just not very familiar music to you. No, it was hard, you know, right. but like, <laughs> this is my thing and I hope Doyle doesn't beat me up if I ever see him. <laughs> if he's still dressed like Doyle, you're Doyle from the Misfits. Your bass player looks like a young Jerry only. Right. A real young Jerry only. Your singer kind of looks between uh, Danzig and Wolverine. <laughs> and basically, you look like, you know what I mean? Right, I right. think you wouldn't yeah. want to be like, hey, no, I'm not playing Misfits tunes because, man, you look like the Misfits almost, really. Right. And this is my thing. Just from a fan's point of view and a, mu you know, a music lover's point of view, if you'd have sprinkled five Misfits tunes in there, the plates would have come unglued. Would have uh -huh. come unglued. You know what I'm saying? Right. When I when I went and saw Michael Grace, now Michael Grace has his own stuff, but he played his new stuff, but then he played the stuff that he would, you know. Right. And the misfits. I I came unglued. The place was awesome. So it was cool. Like, this is my thing. You come out, you play, all right, play some misfits tunes and sprinkle your new tunes in there. And then some guy's like, Man, I like that one song that Doyle played. I'm gonna go get that. Instead of just I, you know what I mean? Like right. I get upset when people are like, nah, man, nah, I'm, you know, I'm not playing. Come on, man. I saw Didi Ramon. He even did Blitzkrieg Bop for fuck's sakes. Man. Uh, like, right. Dude, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So anyways, I, whatever. Uh, I, that was just, that's a fan's opinion. Right. I had a good time and I enjoyed it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, it's hard for me know. because like, I know uh, Steve Ewing from The Urge here in St. Louis. And those guys are old, old friends of ours. And yeah, Steve Ewing does a solo thing where he, he gets his band to, to kind of go through some urge songs and yeah. stuff. And there's a part of me that is like, mm, and there's another part of me that's like, yeah, that's what people want. They, they know Steve. That's what they know Steve yeah. from. And if Steve doesn't do that, then they don't listen to Steve's solo stuff as much. And I, yeah. so it's kind of hard as an artist. I find it a little une uncomfortable. Right. So like like right. the glare of day and the adoring airs. We never played a fragile porcelain, my song or an Ultraman song. 
Right, right. You know, even those members from both bands and stuff. Well, I guess not in the glory day, but in adoring areas, there was members of Ultraman and members of two members of Ultraman actually with me and Rob technically. Right. You know, right. and then, you know, fragile poison, but we never even thought of it. It never even occurred to us. Then again, sure. we weren't calling ourselves Rob Wagner and Tim O. Right. Exactly. We weren't trying to hang our hats on that legacy. So I think I can kind of see what you're saying. I'm actually mentally going through this right now, even saying it, but Steve Ewing is Steve Ewing from the urge. So he's going to do that. Now, Steve Ewing started a band called the TikTok rock and rollers. I don't know where that fuck yeah. that came from. <laughs> and then they probably wouldn't do an nerd song. Right. But you're right. If Doyle comes through and and that's what he's calling himself, you're going to get some Ben Harleys out there wondering why he didn't do like <laughs> anything. Didn't. Teenagers from Mars yeah. or something, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> something that I watched the other day, speaking of compelling, this was not it. Um <laughs> This, I, you know, Tim, there's, I think you'd mentioned a couple of things to me before. Um, I might have got some things confused, but I know Arnold Schwarzenegger has been in a couple movies recently. And I yeah. thought that the, there was one that was kind of a one that was a good one that he was in. This is not it. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> this one's called, uh, I don't know if you've seen it called The Last Stand. Uh, yeah, I have. Is that where yeah. he's the sheriff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I watched oh, I this the fun. other day. That I mean, that's basically what it is. It's yeah. more fun, but I just didn't, you know me, Tim, I'm poking holes in so many things. I'm like, oh God, like mm -hmm. stupid things. Okay. So you got, yeah, he's a sheriff in a town. He goes to the town to get away. He does the chief Brody thing. He goes to a town. It's in the out. It's not on the Island. Right. Okay? Right. <laughs> he's getting away. He wants to get away yeah. from the crime and the yeah. drama and, the, and, and a certain thing that happened to him while he was on the police force. Uh, he goes to the small town, which is cool. The small town's kind of fun, but there's just a couple characters I know, but this is how bad I am Tim. Okay. So there's mm -hmm. one character, the pretty girl deputy sheriff had to arrest her ex-boyfriend on drunk and disorderly. And she keeps saying, like, what happened to you? You were a star athlete. And you were like this. And you got to go on, like, how many people are in this town? It couldn't have been hard to be the star athlete. I don't think you could have fielded a, a baseball team or a tiddlywinks team. You, you know can what I'm jump saying? rope. Like, you were the star athlete. <laughs> oh, you know, and then yeah. just silly stuff. I, I just thought it was poorly written. And I liked some of it. But I just I I groaned through most of it. I remember I, it being it, a but I did fun have to, throwback. So we probably went into it with yeah. a different mindset. Because yeah. if you go into it with a different mindset, you're probably going to have yeah. the reactions you did. Because yeah. that's basically the same plot and setup as you just said of every movie for 20 years that had action in it. You know. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I don't I, know. I, I remember just... it, but I don't remember it. Like I remember yeah. being it being like. A time waster, and it was enjoyable. It was well, no had, escape had, plan. Him and him no. and Stallone and escape plan that's was freaking phenomenal. I'm maybe that's the one I'm looking for. There's, I know there's another one called Getaway. I think that he's in or some kind of something. It may, maybe I know that I escape know. plan was the one that it was him and Stallone, and they were in like a secret, a secret government high security prison. I mean, they got him in a like a. They got him in like a glass room with 16 cameras on every wall, oh. you know, <laughs> yeah, chained yeah. up and his nose is plugged. I mean, everything. And he finds a <laughs> way out, you know, oh, but yeah, it's him yeah. and it's him and Stallone like and they both of them like revert to their one liners. And <laughs> it's just it's really good. And it's really silly and funny at the same time. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, well, I went to this thinking this was like kind of a. Uh, for some reason, I had it in my mind that he just did something recently that was maybe more of a lower budget one, but it was still that good. That was Maggie. And, he did Maggie, yeah, which was it, a yeah. bad zombie one. Though I wouldn't even touch that thing. Okay. Then he did a movie right, called well, Aftermath, which is about a plane crash. That's the one crash. I'm thinking about, Aftermath, yeah. And it's about a plane crash. I think if you got depressed, watch the McDonald's thing. I'm not, not sure okay. you think. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think I want to see it. Uh, yeah. Escape Plane, I'd go back and watch again. Okay. okay. Escape Plane was like... Uh, uh, very, very good, very good. Movie. So yeah, I, 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 I messed up by like I said, I, thinking I was going into something, and then you know, yeah, this had, had Johnny Knoxville, which I'm not a, I don't hate Johnny Knoxville by mm. any means, but his character was awful in it. I thought too, he was like some goofball that had a whole bunch of explosives in his play. I don't know. Well, that's a lot better than Maggie. What you saw okay. was much more entertaining. So you didn't go to the bottom of the barrel because that, okay, that to good, me good. was one of his 
average entertaining. It's almost like, yeah, it feels like an eighties movie, maybe an early nineties yeah. movie, you know, it just no, it feels does like, have that yeah, feel yeah. And, and right. And that's exactly what it is. So it's entertaining, but if you're not in the mood for that, or if you uh, just, you know what I mean? It's like, I could see it growing. In a I little was bit. looking yeah. for something a little more gritty. I mean, I mean, it had enough, it had some blood and guts in it for sure. And, <laughs> Some different kind of crazy action, but eh, yeah. can't, can't watch seventy seven minutes. But you can't wait to see Arnold Schwarzenegger in blood and guts. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, you know? uh, we love our entertainment, yeah. but we hate real life. I'm telling you, right? It's right, true. Yeah, it's no, true. I really it's don't want to see it in my. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to see it in my McDonald's. By any no, means. Uh, no, God, uh, no. Uh, we don't. We no. want to talk about Alien and ketchup for McDonald's, right? So. <laughs> no, right. Mm-mm. No, but <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, thanks, Tim. Well, that was a good segue to my next. Speaking of Alien, no. I guess. Uh, yes, I haven't played my Alien game. I'm getting better at it. Watch out behind that you. Damn, oh, jeez, oh, Tim. Well, that damn Alien. Oh, my God. I, I'm yeah. getting better, but <clears throat> excuse me. I had to figure out how to creep around and, and let him come in. And he's following me a couple times hiding. <laughs> that right, jackass. Right. But anyways, still a fun game. I've been enjoying it. But um, also, we're going to keep with Alien because... This next thing I'm going to talk about, uh, the world premiere, or whatever, the two-hour premiere, happened last night. I know we're in our space-time continuum, but yeah. uh, this was uh, the little show called The Terror. Oh, on AMC. And, yes, and I'm going to mix it in because it's Ridley Scott, right? So that was my yes. alien tie-in. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, uh, you know, Timo, not too bad. I watched the two-hour premiere. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's a, it, it's a story of, uh, it's a, based on a true story of two ships that were trying to plot, like through the, go through the Arctic so they could end up finishing the map to plot the map. You know, um, uh, it's, yeah, it takes place in 1854. I think that both, one of the ships is called the terror. Oh, and the okay. other, uh, is like the Ebra, Ebra or something. I, 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 something like that. Okay. Um, and, uh, this kind of, it, it's nice. It's, it's, I don't know if Ridley Scott's directed it or not, Timo. I'm not sure. I, I think, think he's, maybe. I think he was a or he's executive just a producer. producer yeah, you know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two so ships. Probably, two ships, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's a television show. It's not just a right series. So, yeah, series. So and I think they're probably locked, it, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do believe they'll have probably had different directors for each sure. episode. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, it's a story of two ships, and they're going through to try to map it out, and they end up getting. Yeah, they end up getting. Uh, Locked in, and and it's man, I don't know how you could do that. I, my, my, I, okay, Timo, here we go. <laughs> you and I are locked on in on uh, an ice flow for eight flipping months. Uh-huh. Eight months. Yeah. What? Oh my god. Yeah. I just. Oh. There was a um, um, a story that Angio and I came across. Believe it or not, in our honeymoon, the last night yeah. of our honeymoon in Vegas, we sat in the. You, can, you were locked in. Too. You, you know, <laughs> you know me and her. Like even on our honeymoon, under the last night, we were watching uh, documentaries on <laughs> on uh, PBS in Vegas yeah. in our oh hotel room. <laughs> so we watched one about uh, the ship, the Endurance, and uh, forgive me that the name of the captain is, is escaping me. Same story. They were going up north, north and yeah. they they got ice locked, and it was a story about that. And from what I've seen about the show you're talking about, it's a similar story where but it's two ships. Yeah, they're trying to find it. Look, just quit trying to go over the top of the globe, would you? It freezes. Uh, okay. You know what? There hasn't been too many people up there. I think they say there's been more people in space. There's been more <laughs> people on the moon. Yeah. Than have, right, yeah. than have actually successfully made that passage. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, I'm gonna look into a little more. I did. I did look into at it because you you've been kind of telling me about it. And Angio and I, well, we were knee deep in Salem's lot. So yeah. I th- what we decided to do is just get on the snooty sling TV, and whenever it comes up on the demand, which it might be today already, uh, to yeah. give it a shot. Now I'm I'm not even kidding myself here. I know I'm just going to watch an episode or two to familiarize myself with yeah. it, and then I'll be out. I won't care anymore. And so. So, but I am going to look at it. I am going to look at it because it does look like look like an interesting story. You know what really bothers yeah. me is that these these series is, they look like great things that I would really enjoy in even in a series format if it could be a mini series like these sure. Moby Dicks that I the Moby Dick I watched the Salem's Lot. I mean, you got two or three episodes. You get a middle, beginning, and end, or beginning, middle, and end. If you give me that. I'd be so much happier. And then you wouldn't yeah. have to write yourself. Here's the thing. You wouldn't have to write, write yourself into a corner. I'm telling you right now, I told the NGO this. I said, I wa- the last show I remember I was going to try to start watching when it came on TV was Lost. That's yeah. when it started. Okay. Yeah. Like when it very first started, 
they had this show on called Lost, and the the premise looked really interesting to me. So I watched the first two hour episode of it when it when it aired. The minute it yeah. aired, I watched it, and I remember turning that son of a bitch off, going, "No, no, 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 no." I said they are never going to answer any of these questions in this series, or else it'll end. Never going right, to happen. Right. And I was damn well right. And a lot of people were upset with that series because they never got a question answered. I'm no. not going to watch this thing fall apart. I've seen not, Walking you know, not, Dead fall apart. Right. And it, it was last I'm not series. Sure how long they're going to go with this, Timo? I don't know if. I was wondering the same thing. I don't think it's going to be seasons long. Unless okay. I, I don't. It, I don't, though. I'll it, take I mean, a nine well, episode series yeah, that's complete. What I, to tell you the truth, that's what I'm kind of hoping for in yeah. a way because um, uh, I don't know, though. You know, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> well, you know, the British do that. The British make a series and it's like a yeah. finite amount of episodes and they're done. Yep. That's it. And yeah. I like that. That I will deal with. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I am. Well, because they yeah. already know the story. They know right. what they're from start. You know, they don't exactly. like, oh, well, we got picked up. Now we got to do this. Yes. They know the Which, end. Yeah. And when they did yeah. loss, they didn't know the end of the story. They, they make got it up. loss is what happened. Exactly. Didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even, I only watched that first episode, but I heard people bitch about it for years and years. And I was like, yeah. why are you watching? Yeah. Then why just yeah, wait I'm, to I'm, the I'm, end and see if they answer yeah. a question else? You're wasting all that time. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for the prospects of this though. Like, only for the fact that this has like almost all the elements, except for being locked in ice for eight months, that I like. You know right, right, <laughs> like, right. I don't want to see that either. I don't want to see guys cannibalizing each other and things like that. I, I, I've seen that. Movie. Yeah, it'll you probably, know, happen. Wanna, like, probably happen. Yeah, but I just, I, I want, you know, um, I do want to see. I like ships. I like monsters. I like the, the. You know, loneliness of that. Like, it feels like alien. Right. Uh, not alien. Uh, it does have a little feeling, but it feels more to me like the thing mm -hmm. a little bit. You know what I mean? So, but um, I like it so far. Well, I think it's, it's going to be good. It's a so true story I, I with a monster thrown in, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Or a creature of some yeah. sort. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hope Which some. was what Lost was. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is why I quit watching. Once I saw that thing, I was like, "Nah, I'm out. I'm out. They're never going to oh, show yeah. this thing. I don't know what else going on. I I'm done. You know, it's a yeah. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna look into a little bit more now. If I I watch an episode, if I find out it's going to be a finite amount, then I might stick with it because I want an end. Well, we're gonna give yeah. it a shot. We're gonna, yeah. gonna give it yeah. a shot. That's here. it for me. That's buddy. all you got. So, all right, yeah. let's get to our yeah. official little films, Mister right, Ben so Harley. Let's see. First up, let's go with uh, from 1984. Okay. All right. We have the film The Company of Wolves. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. The uh European, I guess United Kingdom, UK uh production. Uh let's have again. Yes. Let's see here. Um let me give you a storyline. Now, once again, I haven't read this, so we're going in blind. So let's see what happens okay. here for the company of wolves. Get out movie guy. Here we go. All right. Fascinating and imaginative. The Company of Wolves, directed by Neil Jordan. The Crying Game, interview with the vampire. Brings together the timeless Little Red Riding Hood and werewolf fables with a haunting, compelling, eerie, and erotic difference. Oh. The movie is a magical bag of symbolic folklore about werewolves, or rather their sexual connotation. Grandmother Angela Ainsbury tells her granddaughter Sarah Patterson disturbing tales about innocent maidens falling in love with handsome heavily eyebrowed strangers <laughs> that have a smoldering look in their eyes. Are they talking about me, Mr. Ben Harley? I think so, Tim. I've got <laughs> some, I've got some, uh, some heavily eyebrowed <laughs> strangers <laughs> climbing around my face there. Uh, have that smoldering look in their eyes. She also tells her of sudden disappearances of spouses when the moon is round and the wolves are howling in the woods. Uh, Yes. Yes. Um, oh, yes. This is a British, I believe, that's UK, but uh, yeah, British film. Neil Jordan, who, yeah. yes, is a classy and classic director, uh, put this one together. And I'm going to start off by saying this is one of those movies that I saw like in Fangoria magazine and okay. things like that because the effects are pretty good for that time. I mean, they're actually really yeah. good for that time. Yeah. And, um, and so they were kind of touting the effects of it and stuff. Now I got to tell you though, this movie is not for a kid and I don't mean like it's nasty. No. I just mean, it's going to go over a kid's head. As a matter of fact, there's lots of adults heads 
Yeah. That this thing might kind of go over. I think that was me, too. That was you? All right. Uh, <laughs> Something. Is this I the first time you've seen this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. is it really? All right. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Let me, yeah. know. let me know what you, let me know oh, your beginning yeah. thoughts of it here, <laughs> at least. Yeah. Yes, yeah, don't let don't have me uh narrate this story. This one's a <laughs> lot for me to take in. Uh, no, you know, um you know me, Timo. I, I am a werewolf fan. Yes. I like me some werewolves. When someone says werewolf, I say their wolf. I <laughs> like werewolves. Right, right. But I do have a problem with just wolf stories. Yeah, I, know. I, yeah, yeah. I and it's nothing against wolves. I like wolves too, and, and, and there's some snarly looking wolves in this film and others too you know that mm-hmm. are damn scary mm-hmm. damn scary but like this one um i just man, <laughs> I had the hardest time when guys just turn into a wolf i need i don't know i just need more monster i guess right but, but i guess my problem with this film too it's it's good it's very dreamy very like well shot and it feels like a fairy tale right my problem is i had a hard time this is a film that i'm gonna have to i'd have to sit down and watch two or three times Mm -hmm. before i could get all you know um because it's just it was a lot for me to take in and i was kind of confused at a lot of it Mm -hmm. i'm like wait a sec now but you know it kind of tied together for me a little bit at the end i just i don't know though i (laughs) it's because basically what it is it's it's kind of like Almost like a creep show, a little bit where mm-hmm. it, you're, you're getting different stories. You know what I mean? Like, and I thought they were cool, but they just didn't tie in for me with the main story. I guess you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a story within a story. It's right. a, it's a little girl. She's having a dream, and she's yeah. dreaming about the Fred Riding Hood world. Yeah, she goes into that world. Or whatever yes, she while she's dreaming, and she's got yeah. like a mean sister, and I mean all this other stuff. She has her sister killed. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. She. It's yes, it's a symbolic film. This is yeah, a it's yeah. it's look an adult fairy tale. That's what very this much is. so. It's yeah, an adult yeah. fairy tale, and it's very it's it's very cool to look at. It's artsy and how it's, it's kind of stitched together. Yeah, it's symbolic yeah. and it's 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 artsy. Um, I think <laughs> actually the giant <laughs> mushrooms that were strewn about the landscape and the sets. Yeah. I yeah. think those were just a little symbolic of the vibe of what was yes. going on. Oh, and a and I bit. thought that too when I saw those. Yeah. I was like, you know, this. I think they might have been doing some magic. Right. It's got a cool right cast. I mean, it's got Angela yeah. Lansbury, David Warner, Brian Glover, uh, Stephen Ray is in it for a little while from the Crying yeah. Game and all yeah. that. Um, I, for me, I know what I'm going into when I see this movie. Yeah. Um, I really like some of the transformation scenes. Uh, they, yeah, they are pretty good. They're pretty, pretty good. Fun. Some of, I mean, it's almost as if there's a couple of shots inside the transformations that don't hold up very good. Cause there's stiff animatronics Yeah, in some of them, but you're going to get that with the age of this film from 84. Um, but boy, it's v- gorgeous to look at. I mean, the movie yeah. itself is this gorgeous to look at. And, I th- I think I'm getting into this more as I get older. I remember I've seen this. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've seen this since okay. it came out, you yeah. know, like over the years. And I think because I've always found it curious because I always wanted to like it. Now we just talked about, you know, sphere and a couple other things that I just beat myself about, about the head and chest area <laughs> yeah. with that. I just, I'm never going to like this one. It's got a shot with me. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I I, I feel you, but I'm looking at a an artsy European movie, and to me, it's more linear than a lot of the other crap sure. that these people have sure. put out. Um, but I do have a bit of empathy with people that, like Angio, I kind of had to, after we watched, I kind of had to say, well, it's like a dream in a dream. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a, it's more, it's, it's probably got more to do, it's more like a cross between Alice in Wonderland and Little Red Riding Hood. Right, it's yeah. a cross between those two. Does that make sense? Because I, yeah, no, exactly. When yeah. and that it explains it a little bit better, I think for or would explain it a little bit better for people. Yeah, I um I have a hard time with movies like that sometimes when it's not based at least somewhere there's reality going on. Then I can spin off from there. Right. I just didn't really know where reality was and and, and what was the dream after a while. Like kind of I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just, it was. A little weird. Yeah. A little I got too weird at, at times. Now, if I watched it again, I'm sure it wouldn't be near as weird to me. And I'm going to try to. Um, 
because I think uh, I would need to give this movie a second chance uh -huh. because I, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just, it was just a little too, and this is what's funny. I tried starting this movie like earlier in the morning and I put it in. I'm like, no, uh, this is too much right now. Yeah. And I <laughs> watched our second movie. <laughs> We'll get to that. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll go back to this one and get that, wash the taste out of my mouth from the other movie. But <laughs> it's just, it, it, now I know last we, we had a pretty big difference between our films, you know? Yeah, yeah there's uh, another this, contrast. This is that. another huge yeah. contrast. But um, I mean, it's not, I don't think that I didn't like this movie, Tim. I just didn't really understand it enough. Mm -hmm. And I think I need to go back and revisit it because it, <clears throat> I just, I don't know. I wanted. <sighs> it's a piece wanted, of art more than a story. Yes, the story exactly. is inside of a piece of art. The story yeah. is not. And you know, climax. I like art. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but when you think you're being told a more, they're not handing you the story on a silver platter. You have to kind of go right. with it. And if you don't know, you're getting into Little Red Riding Hood. Um, sure, yeah. Well, it's basically a Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, version. It's a version of it. Yeah. You know, basically. Yeah. If you don't know you're getting into that, then it could be a little disconcerting too. I do think that, like, this is what I'm saying to you anyway, that I've seen this a bunch of times and it grows on you. It gets a little bit more yeah. and more. Yeah. But, and, yeah. and the transformation is cool because it's the only transformation into a wolf werewolf that yeah. I think is cool. I mean, usually yeah. the camera cuts away and ah, there's a wolf standing there with a, a suit laying right. next to him, you know, or something. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, this was like, this is extensive. And it's, if nothing else, it's, it's ambitious. Pretty gory, yeah. Very yeah. ambitious uh, transformation and unique. It's very unique transformation too, yeah. which I think is kind of neat. Uh, I like the unibrow thing, you know, the <laughs> don't trust a guy with the unibrow. The unibrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, there's just something, and Angel Lansbury, I think, is good. I mean, uh, it's just, it's just really cool. I mean, to me, it is. But I think yeah, it does take a lot a, of just. It takes a little climbing into. Yeah, there's a lot of story going on inside stories. Yes, it's like, you know what I mean. And you and uh, some of these characters, it's like I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> I was somewhat confused too because the lady at first, she, her husband, the story, the first story that's told, the lady's husband. Like they're on their wedding night, and he's just like, and 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 these are the things that are the underlying themes in this movie. Like, they hear they're on their wedding night, but he hears the call of the wild, and he has to go. Right. Well, that's basically saying, watch your husband or whatever, because if he hears the call of the wild, then he could be gone. Right. Is that the underlying theme? Is I that, that's what I, swear I came up. With. I yeah, know. it's 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 kind of a, a lot. It's a lot it's of a man hating movie. It's a, yeah, it's, a, and, yeah. it's a seminal man hating movie. <laughs> yeah, you know. And then he returns, which he returns all these years later. But maybe I missed it. But like he returns, and then she's she had. She's pregnant, I think. She yeah. had other kids, and he's like, ah, oh, you know, you adulterer and stuff. And then her husband comes in and shoots the wolf or whatever, right. saves her. Right. But I'm like, did was her husband in it? I couldn't. I was like, who just shot him? Oh, maybe that's her husband. I don't. They're just kind of. They're almost like yeah. taking the the Little Red Riding Hood story and pulling pieces yeah. out of it and expanding it into multiple stories in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and it's it's yeah. yeah it's sort of like. So I got kind of yeah. corn fused, and that's just me seeing it for the first time. And there was a lot going on, too much mm -hmm. that I need to go back and rewatch it. You right. know, and and kind of understand it more, and I and I like that. Even some of my favorite movies of all time that I know backwards and forwards. The first time I saw them, I'm like, oh, okay. Right. And then I go back and say, oh, duh, you know. Yeah. So this is one that I will go back and revisit because I think it deserves it a little bit more. Well, in the so. age, the age difference between the, like the Little Red Riding Hood girl and the the, yeah. the menacing guys is is a bit icky because there's yes. a bit of yeah, there's, there's a bit of yeah, like sexual tension going on in. Even the actress, I think, was twelve. So oh, I mean, God. it's kind of like, yeah, it's it's now now yeah. they rewrote a few things. I think Neil Jordan had a few things rewritten because of the age, because he wanted her to play, but he realized she was a bit young for some of this material. So they yeah. did have a few details changed to make it not uber icky. Yeah. Like it could have went, it could have gotten ickier. Let's put it yeah. that way, you know. But uh, it's not. It's it's a challenging film. It's not like Eraserhead challenging, but it, <laughs> but it, it, it is a challenging film. But I think it is something to go back and to to look at and to 
explore a little bit more because you know for some reason it's not really that boring. It's just you kind of no, get swept into on. it. Yeah, you get yeah. swept into it. It's dreamlike. It's it dreamy-like. Is dreamy-like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it's feels like like a, like a fantasy. Red Riding Hood fantasy on the set of Pumpkinhead or something. You know? Yeah, right, I mean, Pumpkinhead's right. a weird, dreamy like that too. Though. Oh yeah, it's, quality. Yeah. yeah, where do those people live in Pumpkinhead? Like, what part of the world is that? You know, like <laughs> right, and it okay. looks like the same part of the world that the people in the Company of Wolves are. So that makes it weird too yeah. sometimes. But um, I'm gonna give Company of Wolves. I'm gonna give it a increasingly good grape ape up. It's not okay. like up to the rafters or nothing, but if you would have asked me about 20 years ago, I would have said, Pfft. but as I'm getting older and, and like being able to absorb myself into the story a little bit more, I'm seeing yeah. more. There's more there. And I, I think I'm liking it and liking it more and more and more. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give it just, I'm just going to give a regular great bait, up, but it is getting better with time for me. Yeah. At least yeah. what are you going to do? I'm going to give it a mild grape ape up because I didn't hate it by right. any means. And I, and I don't think it's awful. I just think it was, uh, for me, it was just a little too dreamy like at mm-hmm. first. And I was, then I got caught up in like, what is going on now? I <laughs> type stuff. And, right. I, and that's, and I, and that's hard for me. But like I said, um, I, I would give it definitely enough respect that I got to go back and watch it again right. too. And I think, I think it would, I think it'll grow on you again. I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah. it, it, if you, if you didn't have a bad reaction to it, you had a better reaction to it than I did the first time I saw it. Yeah. Now, the first time I saw it, I was also probably 12, okay, you know? So, yeah. I mean, that's not a 12 year old movie. I mean, it's no, like you want to no. see, I wanted to see silver bullet, you know, right, and I'm right. watching the company of wolves, but I, I knew about it. So I wanted to see it and Hey, give me credit. 12 year old kid sat through the whole movie and, yeah, and at least yeah, thought about it, and I'm still watching it, you know. So, but um, yeah, okay. So, great ape better up. than dances with wolves. So. <laughs> then a mild, then a mild great ape up for you, and a regular great yeah, ape up for yeah. me. All right, let's get to our next official film, Mr. Ben Harley, All from right, 1978. Yes. We have the fine Alien year. Factor. <laughs> yes, fine year. Yes. I don't know about the film, but the well, film. I'm gonna talk to you about this film here in a minute. Let me get out, movie guy here. Another uh-huh. synopsis now. This was put out by, was it, I think it was Retro Media. So I have no idea what this loony <laughs> uh, storyline is going to say. It's not, <laughs> just let, me, let me get it out here. <laughs> it's going to be let's, good. Yeah, let's give it a try. All right, here we go. Director Don Dolor's homage to the classic sci-fi 1950s creature features, The Alien Factor, 1978, has endured the passage of time to become the standard comfort food for a generation of eager aficionados. Filmed in Baltimore, Maryland, by a collection of never-say-die hardcore fans, the movie boasts a gaggle of monster suits, clever miniatures, and even a stop-motion beast brought to life by then aspiring animation wizard Ernest D. Farino, the Terminator, local actors Don Leifert, Dick Diesel, Eleanor Herman, and George Stover, Infuse the film with an enthusiastic zest that belies the film's tiny budget, adding immeasurably to the charm that is the alien factor. Okay. <laughs> let me let me let me explain this to you. Let me explain right. this one to you. When I was a kid, that I mean like six or seven. Okay. Yeah. I was born in 73. Okay, so get so if you get the years going <laughs> to 78, 79, yeah. I'm right at that age. This movie was made in Baltimore. I think it okay. cost about uh, five bucks to make. You know, it was like thirty to fifty grand, I guess. All all said oh, and done, Jesus. you know, stuff to do, which is yeah. nothing, you know. I mean, no, for a movie no. at all. Um, it was sold to television. Now it was sold to television in those packages of things, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So the mom and pop stations, especially when you're stranded in Central Illinois. This was before <laughs> I lived outside St. Louis. When you're stranded out yeah. in Central Illinois, this is the kind of stuff when you got home from school. That your ABC, NBC, because back in the day, before the corporations took over the media, yeah, uh, actually these things were all locally owned. So the television stations were not only um, encouraged, they were compelled to make original content. Now, follow me here, kids. Yes, <laughs> there was actually uh, original content on local media. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things they would do to cheat... <laughs> is they would buy up these packages of films. The first times I ever saw most of these Hammer movies that I love, most of these weird, like this, movies, 
where when I got home from school, when the television channels wanted, when the guys running the TV stations wanted to go on the roof to smoke their dope. <laughs> and, they, and they just wanted to hit play and let it go. And the alien factor was one such movie that I came home to when I was okay. a kid. Now imagine a seven year old kid coming home and seeing all of these rubber monsters right in your face, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> not shying away from any, uh, perceivable shortcoming that any of this stuff might have. And they're throwing it right at you. And not only that, but you have the bizarro 1970s sci-fi low budget, <laughs> weird montages and weird music going on. It was nightmare inducing to say the least. And I, even at that point was a seasoned vet. This movie, you know what it was? Some of these low budget movies felt more like home movies. So they were scarier yeah. to me. Okay. Uh, it yeah. felt like this was happening outside in the woods, outside my house. And it was right. scary to me. And the, and the monsters, man, they just came out of nowhere. Just walked up and <laughs> pushed shit over. Gotcha. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> much. So that was the alien factor to me. This is a childhood movie. This is something that yeah. I saw when I was a little kid. And as I've gotten older, okay, as, I, <laughs> as I've gotten older, I still enjoy the film for the reasons the synopsis actually stated. Okay, yeah. Because they got this thing done. And they yeah. and they made their intent, and I'll tell you right now, their intent was to make a movie that was a throwback to the 1950s low budget sci-fi monster movies. That was their intent in okay. 1978. So they went yeah. back 20 years, you know, like, I'm yeah. going to go back 20 years, you know, we're doing this and that and they did this all with friends. A bunch of okay. friends put this together. That's that's the story of Alien Factor, at least to me. And yes, it was a Baltimore production. Um, <laughs> I think the interesting thing is that uh, George Stover, uh, who plays like the baby face little mealy guy going yeah. around, uh, he was in John Waters movies. Okay. Um, and the mayor in the movie was played by a Baltimore horror host, Count Gore Vidal. <laughs> okay nice. and he had the creature feature on, in baltimore and so okay. he actually played the mayor and then on creature feature they had a long series of things where they would have like the director don doler and and some of the special effects guy come on on oh, a wow. show and yeah. they never did say that he was the mayor though they always kept okay. that kayfabe you know they, they okay. never said that he was the mayor and stuff but you can Anyway, so there's a little bit of history about this little movie that got sold to TV, and now kids like me are buying Blu-rays <laughs> of them. What do you think, Ben Harley? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know I've seen this before, Tim, and I I do believe it was Mystery Science or mm. somewhere I've seen this before. Maybe I, I don't know if they had this on Mystery Science, but you, I was on TV over. Yeah. They had it. Yeah, TBS played it. Um, I'm trying to think because I've just seen it and it's just recently too. Like, and uh, whoo wee. Um, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> this movie. Um, I don't know, it does make me laugh, but I will say, now hearing w what you just laid on me, yeah, um, I, I, I will have to give it a little bit more respect then because, yeah, it just <laughs> <laughs> this movie is awful, uh -huh. awful film movie. I don't know. <laughs> so, basically, what it is, him, is right, there's uh, it's kind of like uh, an alien spaceship crashes. Yes. And then, but it, right in three, front of a camera. Yeah. Right yeah. in front of a, a, of a, a <laughs> yeah. rolling camera, like right there. Right. Yeah. Right. Right the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it, it had like prisoners, <laughs> their alien, like prisoners on it. Right. Um, I believe. And they get, yeah. they, they are cut loose upon the town. And then there's like one being that's like the jailer, I think, that's trying to mm -hmm. capture them or mm -hmm. get them back. Yeah. So, <laughs> no. Well, Ooh, wait. You... I, my favorite part, Timo's, of the movie is like when the cop is in the car and he's driving and he, um, they just overdubbed, uh, you know, him talking back to oh, yeah, headquarters yeah. or whatever. And yeah. it's just, it's, <laughs> I don't know. And to me, that is kind of funny, you know. Uh -huh. If they are trying to do the throwback to like a fifties, uh, yeah, yeah, they they did do a good job. But I don't know the movie itself. Um, 
I don't know. It's just, <laughs> you, you know, it just, I don't know. L- l- let me, let me put it. You, you have to kind of go into this. It's almost like uh, what we were talking about earlier, almost with, you know, company wolves. I think if there is yeah. a similarity in these movies, is there both movies you have to go into in the right frame of mind? You right, definitely right, have yeah. to. And they're very different. Very, very, very different. Now <laughs> the alien factor is something that it did. It didn't like keep me up at night, but it scared me when I was a kid in a fun yeah. way. And I didn't expect oh, yeah, it to yeah. scare me because it was, I had seen a lot. I mean, there was a lot of these grainy, low, zero budget sci-fi movies on TV when we were kids. And yeah. I know oh, you yeah. saw some of them. You probably remember half of them. And I remember half of them too. Like the cremators and things like that. Things yeah. are just awful, you know, with, you know, there's a monster, but he's invisible. <laughs> well, yeah, that's called <laughs> yeah. budget, you know, and stuff. But right, right. And this is one of them. But the one thing is it didn't shy. And there's so many da- different damn monsters in it and different yeah. aliens. But it is basically a, a, a guy that has a prison uh, spaceship. He's 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 collecting these specimens and it crashes on Earth. That's a cool idea. This yeah. is 1978, they're, they're like, you know, it started 1977. <laughs> right. So they get this idea where the spaceship cl- lands on Earth and and all of the the prisoners or the zoo animals or whatever in it, interstellar yeah. zoo animals break out. Yeah. And then yep. these guys, these good aliens, uh, one played by I thought it was Burton Cummings from the Guess Who for a while, but it's Don Lifer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, him and some other members of the Atlanta Rhythm section are running around this movie trying to uh stop him and yeah. and there is twists there is twists as a who is who and things and stuff like that too um i think what hurts this movie is not the rubber monsters it's no uh, stop motion animation bad stop motion animation has not aged well no it just uh-huh. hasn't bad rubber suit monsters kind of have because they're fun yeah but, but the st- and and, this, and look that was the second stop motion yeah, Mo- monster for that movie. They had a different one and they cut it and redid it. So that's right. That's actually better than the other monster that they had for the stop motion <laughs> one. Yeah, and they do have one that's invisible most of the time. Which yes, it it's a budgetary constraint. But the big right, bug right. monster, the big like I don't know hoofed monster going around. That thing was pretty. That thing was pretty ambitious. Yeah, I would say for yeah. sure. And then that was a buddy of theirs put yeah. that together. Yeah. You know, and stuff. So I just, to me, the movie's fun. Is it good in a fun way? Is yeah. it, a, is yeah. it like going to win any awards, fun awards, but no, it's not. Nobody can act in this thing. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I, can, did, you know, so. I did enjoy the bar team. What was that band that was in the bar? Oh uh, God, man. I thought that the was wig. the guess who for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I was humming the song too. I can't remember what the hell was it. Oh, <laughs> oh! I, every time I hear it, I remember it, but I can't. Yeah. I know the song. I know yeah. the song. And then there's that weird scene where the kids are playing out yeah. in the field, and they come yeah, across a, that. And think about it: seven years old sitting there watching that, and yeah. you're not thinking cheese. This movie was no. only two years old when I saw it. Right? No, you weren't thinking that at all. No, were, uh-uh. I mean, and plus, that they was find, serious matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. That it, part was really weird, man. Yes. It's like, it was in this like Salvador Dali type weird thing. Yes. <laughs> like, and then they come across that dead body. So yes. Yeah, man, it was pretty good. It <laughs> goes from cheesy to weird. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's a that's a different kind of like vibe to be going back and forth from. Now yeah, look, for sure. I understand this is a silly low budget movie. It it's it's remembered because it got sold to TV and people like me saw it. And you <laughs> right, saw it before. Right. You know, yeah, and if yeah. you saw it before, I guarantee you saw it on TV. I guarantee right, you just right, watched yeah. it. And we're like, what the hell am I looking yeah. at? You know, but <laughs> it just, yeah. I just happened to see it at the right age. And yeah, it just, yeah, I've sure. loved it. It's been one of my favorites ever since because of that, because it's, I yeah. don't know why. I just, I just loved it. Now I go back and watch it with a grin on my face because it's right. fun and it's funny. And I know that the guy in mayor is Gore Vidal and, and I, I always thought Tom, Tom Lyford or whatever it was, yeah, Tom Lyford, I always thought he was Burton Cummings. When I was a little kid, I thought that was a guess who singer in that movie. Really? I did. I loved the guess who That's when awesome. I was a little kid. So I was yeah, like, I yeah. thought that that was Burton Cummings. I, I don't That's know. That's funny. Why. Yeah. That's but awesome. uh, look, I'm going to give this a nostalgic 
Uh, big grape ape up. That's just me. It's okay. just a nostalgic yeah. one. And I have a ball watching this movie. I just, it's just fun. I even watched some of the special features where they, they dug up some of these people that were in this movie and oh, wow. let them talk a little bit yeah. about it. And that was, that was fun, you know, to kind of see that. And you could tell these people were like, I was in what movie? Oh, that's yeah. right. I remember those three days. Yeah. You know, yeah. people see that. What? You know? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. What are you going to do, Mr. Ben, Mr. ben Harley? Uh, you know, I'm just going to give it a, yeah. Oh, but, you don't like it. You don't like it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, well, I really you know. don't, yeah, the movie itself, I don't really like, but the fact that you told me, I didn't know that this was kind of, I just thought it was a, like, so for me, I guess I could give it a little bit more of a, a decent great ape up because I had no idea it was like, you know, put together like that. You yeah. Know, I just thought it. So yeah, no, that's, and that's, that's kind of cool. And the fact that they were trying to go for an old fifties look or, or not a real look, but fifties feel of, right. you know, the low, low budget movies, you know, well, like that. So, you know, you always that, see the kids that, that were, um, inspired by Starlog and famous monsters yeah. magazine. And they would, they would create the little effects in their eight millimeter yeah. home movies. These are the guys, these guys yeah. had their own fanzines that were bought by Starlog. Oh, so wow. they had yeah. fanzines that they were doing, uh, trying to tell other kids in the country how to make eight millimeter films, how to do stop motion. And oh, they, cool. they were, so they were pioneers of this stuff. And they actually just decided instead of doing eight millimeter, they're going to do a 16 millimeter professional film and have it blown up to 35 and sell it. And wow. they did it and they got it done. Yeah. They got the yeah. money. They got it done. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's I just love it for that. It's got a little soft yeah. spot in my heart for that. And it's a lot. Most of it, I admit, is nostalgia. So but yeah. look, if you go into this thinking if you want to see a, a bad movie, that's a lot of fun that won't bore you. Yeah. Go. There's a lot of monsters in this. It does a real right. it, it does a real good job of trying not to bore you. It throws a lot of monsters at you. Um, the monsters <laughs> might get bored while they're moving towards you in a slow fashion, <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, you know, and, and there's a little, there's a little story going on. There's a little story. There's a little plot twist here or there. And some of it's like eye rolling, you know, like, Oh, you just yeah. happen to have a speaker in the woods sitting there and shot a <laughs> frequency at that thing. Are you kidding yeah. me? You oh, know, yeah. but <laughs> You forgive it for the nonsense, you know. So, right, right. Uh, look, I watched Bog yesterday. Oh, boy. With Aldo Ray, like Marshall Thompson stuff, that a bunch of old people from these sci-fi movies. And this is better than that. I mean, that's a lot of fun, too. That's pretty sure. silly, too. And then silly almost in the same way. This, I think, this is better. It's just, it's better. I don't think the acting is better, but I think that the actual story in the movie is a little bit better. So anyway, a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, just a big nostalgic grape ape up. You think you might have fun with this. You're looking for something bad and you're going to give it a, mm. it's all right. You may, yeah. maybe have a little bit more respect now. I'm more respect for it. Knowing that they put it together themselves. A lot yes. More respect, you know, yeah. Like that, so. yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. And then two, uh, let's see, I'm going to give, I got a grape ape up for the company of wolves and well, you got a mild one. What are you you're trying to get better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's getting better. The company wolves just gets better, I think, with time as you get older. Hopefully, so. I'm definitely gonna go back and recheck it out again. Right you now, so. so all right, Mr. Ben, let's get out of here. All right, uh, coming up soon, we're gonna have oh, Hicks we got a Hicks season. Up. Danny Hicks from Evil Dead Two and Dark Man gonna be a co-host in the show coming up pretty soon, and I do believe we are going to have Mr. Mark Diamond, the Fresh Prince of yes. Darkness from the Dwarves. On, I think he wanted to talk. I think he wanted to tell our audience his thoughts on humanoids from the deep. So how do you nah. stop a man from doing that? <laughs> you can't. I don't. Know. I can never <laughs> you stop shouldn't. you. So I'm, I'm no. not going to try to stop him either. So <laughs> until next time, Mr. Ben Harley, uh, keep an eye out, keeping ears out for those uh, special guests on our show, and stay spooky. And we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.